Klinger. Hey friends, yes, it is Klinger. And uh, man, what a fun time this is to share a screen with, uh, with Amy Lee from Evanescence. Amy, what's up? Hi, thanks for having me. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. Um, it's been a minute since we have heard from your superstar band. And it's interesting because um, fans of music get so antsy and it's as if you are musicians and creative types can be like, uh, you just set on autopilot and you have a never ending um, stable of ideas and song stuff. Right. And so you should always be churning out music. And I like the fact that while you haven't gone Chinese democracy, Guns N' Roses on us, <laughs> like you, you've been away for a minute. And, uh, and I, I appreciate that because as a fan, and I'll wait, you know, Tool makes their fans wait. And so right. like, when it's time to come up and surface, uh, Evanescence will do that. And it looks like this is the year for that to happen, man. Yeah, crazy how that works. And it ended up being this year, but, uh, but it, is, it is so right. It feels so good to have this music um, to work on and to have coming out at the same time right now. Um, this is a different moment and a different experience for us in a lot of different ways. Um, but one of those, just the fact that we're still working on it and it's coming out. So I'm doing this promo with you and then shutting off my phone, you know, and going back to writing lyrics for the next thing. Um, it really, that was an idea that I had a while back, but I didn't realize how much this year was going to be whether I liked it or not going to be like all about just living in the moment and living for today because we don't know what's coming next and we can't control the world around us. Not that we ever really could, but like more than ever, we really can't. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to do it. And a lot of the bands that I have always admired, you know, they, they wait until they have uh, something that they're excited about um and something that they're ready to say before coming out with their albums you mentioned tool portisad's one of those bands oh um, there's a bunch of them yeah i i'm i'm all about uh quality over quantity for sure we've been out we've been around we've been playing a bunch um yeah. and released different things but for for a full original album yeah man it's been a decade i mean that's a long long time i do want to kind of fill in the blanks though um and i haven't been stalking you but social media and the internet kind of helps <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you have, well, first of all, let me just tell you this real quick, sort of a personal story, but I'm going somewhere with it. Okay. Um, I am buying a 1950s German Telefunken stereo console with the old school record player. Ooh, cool. Um, and I've had it totally redone by this old dude that reminds me of my grandpa. And so I'm updating the speakers and some subs. Well, I go down to, uh, to Richmond, I'm based in DC, and I went last weekend and I went to see it for the very first time. And I bought this really cool tube amplifier. And right. the very first record I heard on it was The Chain from Fleetwood. Aww. Or the How song cool is that? From Fleetwood Mac. And it gives me goosebumps because oh, wow. your version of that is just such a cool twist on it, but a nod to the original. And I just, Thank I had you. to bring that up because it, it was Thank a Thank you. Moment, you know? Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we love Fleetwood Mac. I mean, just cause they're just amazing and unusual. I mean, how many bands are there with like half and half, like girls and guys yeah. kicking ass, still yeah. kick ass. Um, yeah, admire them a ton. It was a real honor to in any way touch um, a piece of their music. Everybody in this band has similar and different music tastes like we all have our own personal style that's different from the rest of us um but there one band that we all love is is that one i love that and it was such a treat to to hear that song because i i knew that you had put your i'm gonna just say it you put your midas touch on it you know and that's <laughs> thing. like for real no bullshit when when a when a musician or a band covers a song that i i like or any song I, I don't want a carbon copy of the original song because I can get that right. when I listen to The Chain from Fleetwood Mac. So That's how right. do you go in to cover a song? Yeah. And we're going to get to the new record. But what are your thoughts? Do you want to put the Amy Lee stamp on it? Uh, for sure. Um, that is my thinking exactly. If you're going to do a cover, there needs to be kind of a, a reason um, and a new a new side to show or a new um, interpretation of the lyrics or the musical mode or whatever it is, that there's some different light that you can put it in and give it another um, dimension so that it's like you're hearing something 
new, you know, you can do that and still play, pay a total tribute to the, I mean, I think anytime you do a cover, you're paying a tribute to the original. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it puts a little bit of a different pressure on it um, because you want to make it great if it's a band you love because you don't want to be like, well, cool, they did it great and I did it bad. So <laughs> No, <laughs> don't talk like that. Yeah. Um, here's a personal question. Um, where did you find your singing voice? At what age? Like, like I've tried to sing and I, I'm just going to stick to the radio job. But like, were you five years old and all of a sudden you just started humming and singing? And like, where does somebody like you with a voice that you have, where do you find that for the first time? I, I, I hope that this is uh, empowering to people that may one day become singers. But I didn't really think of myself like that. I um, could sing, but everybody in my family could sing. And I didn't think of myself as like some spec spectacular singer. Um, I wanted to write music um, and I wanted to play music. Uh, and the singing actually came in later um, because what I thought I was really into and, and what I wanted to do um, was be like a dramatic uh, Beethoven, Mozart, wannabe like composer person. Um, when I was very young, like when I was like eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, like writing dramatic sounding tones on the piano and learning how to actually um, score music notes and rests and things like that when I was uh, pretty, pretty little. Um, that was my big aspiration. Uh, and then, you know, I became a teenager and grunge hit and alternative music and suddenly like there was an outlet for the fact that I also wanted to be a poet you know so all of my poetry became like lyrics and it was that I was singing because I was the writer not because I thought oh I have this awesome voice and I need to share it like I I kind of grew into seeing myself as a singer and having the confidence to front a band wasn't something that um came easy to me. I really had to constantly um, build myself up and tell myself that I was worth standing there. I, you know, you mentioned being an inspiration or having an inspirational story. Like, I think that checks that box. And I'm not a big fan of that saying, but like, cool. some people hear this and think, oh my God, that's so awesome because you didn't go searching for that. You found it out of a passion for something else. Yeah. Yeah, totally. You just got to do what feels good I, yeah. on a creative level and just in life. Like, I really think that, and it's been said, and it's maybe easier said than done, like, like the secret to like living a happy life is like, find what you love to do and find a way to make that your job. Yeah. I think that you got a pretty cool job. Do you like your job? I love my job. And I it's, it's like, sort of working. Like, <laughs> there's like, so many different sides of it. Yeah. You know, there's so many different um, outlets for different types of work like if I'm feeling inspired and creative like writing a song like to me that is the core that is the most important piece like without that then we're not here um but then also like you know when you want to feel like the power and energy and, and connection of of humans in a big beautiful show you know that is a whole other side of what we being performers that's another side of what we do yeah um, getting to shine light on stuff that i care about and and be inspired by other people's uh not just artists but just people people's stories and um their experiences in their lives like getting to just like i don't know have enough of a voice that i can shed light on that that's cool yeah. um talking to our fans like a lot of fans a lot of people come to us um with really deep, hard um, stories about things that they've been through, they've been tough in their life and how our music was part of their journey and they just wanna share tough things with us. Um, and a little bit of um, being a counselor is, is part of our job too, which is awesome for me um, because I don't always feel like I know exactly what to say, but in my heart, that's, that's where I am a lot of the time. Uh, I'm a big sister uh, of uh, the biggest sister, like uh, quite a few little siblings. Um, <laughs> and like, yeah, um, being, being the person that somebody comes to talk to, it's totally how I grew up. Um, it feels really good to be able to like apply that in, in my job. Yeah, you I love my job. That, I, I am, I, I love that you said that because I feel like, um, your song, The Game Is Over, 
mm-hmm. plays into everything you just said. And mm. I, I love that song. Um, I love that you are so real and that you will just dive in head first and talk about something like that. And um, I, I remember I worked in Jacksonville on a radio station for a long time. Uh, and Jacksonville what? Florida. Oh, okay. And I lived in Jacksonville Beach, just a couple blocks from a very good friend of both of ours, Terry. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I spent some time there. Yeah. yeah. And I, I worked for Planet Radio for many, many years. And it was one of the best times in my career. But I always walked into that building every day with a smile on my face. And sometimes I didn't want to smile. And when I wouldn't yeah. smile, people said, oh, Klinger, what's wrong with you? nothing's wrong with me. This is the real me. And I, when I heard yeah. the game was over, like I get a little, like I'm, I'm real and I, I'm, I'm dialed into my, my own emotions and stuff. So Brad. when I heard that song, that's kind of what you're talking about, right? Oh yeah, definitely. That's cool. Um, that you've got it. <laughs> I feel like that. I, I know that, um, you know, in, in music in general, like people draw all kinds of, um, personal uh interpretations and i like that i like for it to be able to mean different things to different people that but for me for sure um that's real um went through a pretty one of the most massive probably the most massive tragedy of my life uh two years ago losing my little brother and um processing that grief you know you get kind of a, like an allotment of time where it feels socially acceptable to be a downer and then it's like okay get back to work (laughs) and uh and it's not it's not just that it's coming from everybody else it's not like everybody else's fault um it's more me you know it's us feeling like all right like gotta move on like we gotta we gotta not drag people down I'm totally still not over it but I can't um I I just I have to to hold it in and then it it becomes a thing where you're not letting things out the way that you need to and it's a struggle um and that's true in other times in my life too, where it's not just about grief, you know, just um, being who we really are and smiling and being okay with things we're not actually really okay with. I don't want to do that anymore. And I think that's what's cool. That's what leads um, the theme of that song really points it towards the center kind of theme of the album, the bitter truth is like ugly, pretty, don't care, doesn't matter how bitter it tastes, truth over lies. And we want that, man. I want, I want, I want to be real in my own life. And honestly, if one of my personal friends, whatever, if, if I say, Hey man, how you doing? You don't have to say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. If you're not good, tell me, like, I want that. I crave it. And so when I heard that song, I'm like, you know what? I mean, yeah, radio is my business. Playing music is my business, but I'm a fan of music and I yeah. want meaningful music when I want it. And here's yeah. the other thing about this song. It fucking rocks. Thank you. Like, Thank you. Feels good. Your drummer, your guitarist, the, your bassist, uh, yeah. I feel like turned it up just a little bit because it's so yeah. pronounced. And then your it voice is. just punching it right through all of it. Thank you. You should go on and just keep complimenting all of us for the next few minutes. My, my point <laughs> is, I love is, is, is that I love the music I love and I want to sing praises about it. But well, your message is delivered in a badass rock and roll evanescent song. So Thank like, you very much. You know? Yeah, no, the guys rock. And this, uh, there's stuff about music and what it is doing for us in our own personal lives and how much it is just fueling us right now. Um, and we were all really excited about that song. It has been something that has just been the biggest positive um, of this year to have this music that we are still able to create and share um, during this time when everything has been so locked down and, and all everybody's plans have been canceled and, and just everything is just scary um, and out of control. It's felt really, really good to be able to still like have our work and control our work and make it that much more badass, you know, or whatever. <laughs> Yeah. We pour our we're really pouring our whole selves into it. We would have it. We would have anyway. It's been a long time since we made an album, but there is just a new sense of leaving nothing nothing behind. <laughs> like it's all out there. <laughs> this year will not expire without us getting your record. Is that correct? Um well, I mean, I I I'm not trying to pin you down on a date, but do you believe that this is going to be the year it drops? You're you're teasing, you're dangling the carrot with these these songs. 
because to me like like this is it like this is the album being released i'm trying to look at ah, okay. in a new way okay. um and that was that was pre-pandemic it's just worked in our favor um yes. that that's kind of what we have to do if we're going to be releasing music and we definitely did have to slow down a little bit because we couldn't be together um but we're back on track um and i'm in there but it, this is a different thing i'm i'm literally still writing lyrics to the songs that we already have you know drums and guitars down for that's different for me um and it's i'm just i don't know what it is but over the past few years like i am enjoying the challenge of doing things in a totally different way just like breaking the cycle not following our old rules and not having our old safety nets and just going for it like i I don't have, there's no time. Life is too short. Like we're just doing this now. You know, and I appreciate you saying that. And I feel like I'm guilty because it's like, hey, Klinger, if, if you wanted to give me a piece of chocolate cake and just before the last, I'm going somewhere with this, just before okay. the last fight, I'm like, hey, Amy, can I get the other half of this cake? Isn't that what we want in life? So I, I am guilty of it because you've given us a couple of songs and then I go straight to the rest of the cake. Hey, man, when is Evanescence going to give us a whole damn record? You know, I'll I, keep feeding you bites. This is more yeah. like a chef's table, okay? Yeah, oh, I love you that. You take your one gourmet it. piece at a time. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I, I am cool with that. Um, here's what I want to know, though, because you said pre-pandemic, you know, if it's been almost 10 years since Evanescence has made uh, a, a full-on record, mm -hmm. it didn't just start five months ago. Right. So you probably started the, well, you probably started the process at the end of the last album cycle in your mind, making lyrics and coming up with a theme, right? Before. There's a couple of albums that, um, I'm sorry, there's a couple of songs on this album that the writing at least started for, like during the creation of the last full album and didn't get finished or, or was a piece that didn't fit that puzzle. Um, and, you know, if it's still in your head, 10 years later, you know, it's worth finishing out. Um, so yeah, it feels really, really good to have some of those ones that just have been in the bank all this time, not just be finally recorded, but really be looked at again with new perspective um, and the band as we are now to go, okay, like let's make this for real and just change that's it, cool. you know? That's cool yeah. to hear because you're sort of pulling back the curtain on, because you know what, as, as fans of, of music, we like to hear that. Like, I, I, I'm, I love the behind the scenes mentality. Like you're saying, hey, this has been in the bank for a minute. Yeah. Let's open, up the, let's open up the bank door and just look at it and revisit it. Because you know what, it probably sounds different today than it would have if you would have made it oh, 10 years ago, right? Absolutely. And it's interesting how um, at the time on a couple of, on one of them in particular, I felt like it was, I felt like such a failure that we didn't get it to where, where it was in my mind and it just it didn't happen the way that I thought that it, it should we didn't have the capacity to do it the way we're doing now then and I am so glad that it's happening now um so yeah I I often start at the bank like you get a new idea when it comes to you it's hard to force that um yeah. Yeah. but a great place to start is I'm constantly laying down a quick idea of just a piece like just a snippet you know of oh i got a cool verse idea just like lay it down really rough and put it in the pile and there's a big pile there's always a pile so when you just are like you know what today is a rainy day i'm gonna go out there and i'm just be creative and see what so you come in you dim the lights down low you light a little incense and go through the pile like that's a great way to start you know even if it's literally just in your voice memos in your phone yeah. just like listen to an idea go Ooh, oh yeah i forgot about that that was cool let's do this so but we, we've gotten a lot of ideas more recently too. It's a cool combination of just like a whole bunch of stuff, like stuff from back then, but then also things that after the pandemic hit and we finally were able to find a safe way to come together um, to do this remaining part of the album, like the yep. energy and gratitude um, and fire that was in us in that moment made for music that I don't think could have existed that way before. I, uh, to that point, um, the pandemic sucks. Yeah, it does. Welcome. 2020. Captain Obvious. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, and you've probably heard this, maybe you're living part of this, where 
I got a lot of friends. You certainly see it on social media. Like, Oh my God, I can't wait to get back to what it, you know, normal. You know what? Normal wasn't all that great. Normal was without a pandemic, which I think we can all agree. Yo, let's get back to that facet of normal. But like, I think a lot of good things have happened personally and professionally for all of us over the past five or six months. We've, we've learned different ways to, to vibe. Like I'm actually seeing more of my mom and dad now because we're doing like video conference calls and it's, and they live in Atlanta. Yeah. That's cool. We don't have to kick to the curb everything that we've learned over the past five to six months in the name of getting back to normal. No. And it makes you look and appreciate when something like this, I mean, when nothing is like this, when anything hard, when challenges come at you, um, you know, you're forced to kind of look at what's important in your life and kind of reprioritize and make, we have to make more effort to do things now. So it becomes yeah. like clear to us what those important things are and who those important people are and um, how we want to be spending our time. That's for sure. Um, and I think that it, the, the challenges lead to innovation and creativity. You know, you, you're forced to do things differently. And then sometimes you find out that you had a talent that you didn't know that you did, or, Hey, I can do this this way. And I actually like it better. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, the last time I saw a band by the name of Evanescence was at the Tabernacle in Atlanta. Oh, that's a great place. And uh, Terry was in the band at the time. And, and, uh, and to see um, Evanescence up close like that versus a huge, I, I've seen you at an arena too. I want to say I've seen you in Atlanta at one of the big arenas. Um, awesome. The full on production element of an Evanescence show is one of the facets of your job that you were talking about a little while ago. And it's like, um, you're a damn good piano player. Thanks. Thank you. Um, here's another personal question. How far are you away from the nearest piano wherever you are right now? Does the keyboard count? Yeah, yeah, it's a piano like. There? Yes, oh, I love that. So many. <laughs> I, I love hearing that. Who taught you how to play piano? Because my wife took piano lessons um, in Alpharetta, Georgia, just north of Atlanta as a kid. And she was kicking and screaming the whole time. She hated it. I begged for piano lessons. And it makes a difference, like, the way that they come to you. Because, um, like I said, I'm the big sister, okay? So I, when I was, I don't know, six or seven, like, really young, um i would hear uh like show tunes like stuff on tv like the adams family song or something and be like i can do that and like pick it out and figure out how to yeah. do it and be like look at me you know um but i couldn't really play and my mom could sight read and i remember mom uh like you know just plucking out beatles tunes or whatever out of a songbook and then i there's this moment that i really remember and my parents remember where i sat down at the piano and i just started crying and mom was like what and I was like, I just want to be able to put my hands on the notes and have them play music like you do. Um, and she thought that was really sweet and that inspired her. And she told her mom, my grandma, and my grandparents had more money than we did. And we couldn't afford piano lessons. Um, and I begged. And it was like, you know, a thing like where not yet, but like the next year yeah. um, they agreed. And it was a special gift. And having looked at it, like known that I couldn't have it and I wanted it so bad and it was a special gift that was like kind of out of our price range and all that mm-hmm. was a big deal to me. So I, I really did appreciate it and take it seriously. Not to say that when I became a teenager, I didn't avoid, pra- I would sit down for my piano time and I didn't want to practice the songs. I wanted to make my own songs because that's when like the band was starting and it was always like, I want to write my own music. Um, but I, I did still practice, but I was kind of like a procrastinating cram before practice you know lesson day <laughs> but i had a great piano teacher mrs twombly in uh in little rock she was incredible i had piano teachers before that because we didn't live there when i was little but um yeah it was something i wanted and i was talking about being a big sister because um we all took piano my little sisters um took piano and and we're good at it too uh, but it i think that maybe it was a little bit more of like oh why are you making me do this kind yeah. of a vibe you know because it was like a yeah. human we all do this everybody takes piano now that's what we're doing <laughs> yeah thanks amy appreciate it big sister yeah i spoiled it for everyone like, does does mrs is is mrs twombly still alive you know what? I was just wondering that the other day. I hope so. Um, she was she was an older lady then, okay. so I'm not, I'm not sure that she is. Last time I spoke to her was um, well, over five years ago. So but, probably check in. Still in the middle of uh, 
an incredible career for her to know that, yeah, it's just, I kind of, I, I did something. She was deaf. She definitely has been alive, you know, to know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. She was very proud. I think that's cool. Um, is your kid the luckiest kid in the whole wide world to have a mom that can sing a child to sleep? Aw, I don't do that enough. My voice is always tired by the end of the day, and I'm like, shh, let's just be quiet. Let's just read a book. Hey, that's kind of cool, too. <laughs> that used to uh, sleep when I was a little but he, but he loves tour and misses tour and, uh, like, loves sitting on the side of the stage and, and watching the show. Oh. The lights, you know, the crowd, the whole thing. Yeah. Like, he thinks... He kind of thinks they're there for him. <laughs> I think that's pretty neat. Um, and certainly probably a source of, of inspiration for a record too, right? Oh, for sure. What, having a child? Yeah, I mean, are you, do you make songs maybe a little differently now um, with a son? Well, uh, I mean, I did a kid's album, so yeah. Yeah, I know you did, and I know you did, and I, um, I think that's so, you know, to sort of, well, you certainly weren't necessarily pacifying Evanescence fans over the past 10 years to make a child's record, right? right. A children's record. Right. But yeah, like, that was you do that and sort of flex and pivot. Is the formula sort of the same, even though the subject matter may not be? Um, I mean, it's, no. You can say, I, I, you're I, an idiot, you have no concept of No, no, I mean, I, I, there are similarities to be drawn. Of course, we went in and we made an album, and that's how it works. But okay, the, okay. Yeah, yeah. the inspiration and the whole feeling and the whole vibe and, and the, uh, the mantras, the themes, like, it was yeah. different. It was a different thing. Um, and it, it's the same in that, it, you know, it started just out of wanting it to exist. Okay, cool. Um, like, ooh, I want this. Let's do this for fun. Not because, you know, there's... I don't know any good reason to do it other than like this will be fun for our family god I'm so glad that we did um it was like a whole family record my dad's in there my sisters my brother all of us like my uncle like we all play music so we just kind of got together and and did a couple songs and then it just turned into more and more and more um but it, you know I was just singing those kind of like song ideas to Jack when I was taking care of him when he was two and yeah. it just turned into like you know what why don't we do this this will be fun like because it's not time to do the Evanescence thing yet and this is what's on my heart so why don't why don't we just do it um I think that for me that is that's the feeling like yeah to make anything to write a song to make an album to, to go forward with um any creative project um it's always just the best things really are born from just a desire for it. You just have to want it. It has to be because you want it, not because somebody wants you to or because it's time or because the fans are impatient. You mentioned about um, the fans always wanting you to crank out stuff. And um, that, uh, that pressure of the fans uh, always wanting more and it's never enough. I hope that never stops. That is so wonderful. The fact that people are out there and it's never enough for them. They always want more music from us. Hell yeah, that is great. That would be such a cool feeling, right? I'm so grateful for that. I, I, I think I, there was a time when I looked at that a little bit differently, like, oh, they're never satisfied. But yeah. come on, how great is that? That's so awesome. I mean, it's good. I like it. Bring it on. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> think about it is like a, well, I mean, first of all, I have such an appreciation for, for all of the things and skill sets and creativity elements that I don't possess myself. Like my uncle is a, is a master woodworker and he just makes these incredible pieces of whether it's furniture or cabinets or tables. Um, That's cool. And he's as busy as he can be, but I also feel like he's as busy as he wants to be. Right. Right. There isn't well, there's really a question there. More of no, just but, but in, in my way of relating to that is by saying that when it comes to um, making a full album like this, yeah. you're taking on a big project. Like I know that like the next couple of years ahead of me are set. Um, and that can be intimidating. Um, that's why it was a cool idea to go in and do this kind of in pieces at yeah. first like hey we're gonna be on tour and then you know in between that tour and the next tour we're gonna get together a little bit and write yeah. and then we're gonna spend some time with our families and then we'll go on tour and then we'll spend some time writing and then we'll go spend, you know and then we'll go in the studio and record some of them and then we'll go back to writing it just being able to break it up like that and not feel like okay for the next year I'm like a writing creating cave person with no release until the whole thing finally comes out in one big go like yeah. we can spread that out and make it more enjoyable for ourselves and i 
don't think it's less enjoyable for our fans. In fact, I think it's more because they're getting like a longer period of time where they're just constantly getting more stuff from us. So I think it's good. I, I like, like the way that I, that's, um, and I don't want to call it like a, a business model, but maybe, right. it is. Um, but I like that. I, I, I think that's, I think that's pretty damn cool. Um, we live in a, a world where like the rules can be whatever yeah. now, you know, and I, I've been in this long enough and the rules were just kind of one way that I'm ready. I like, I like embracing the change. It's cool. You can do whatever you want. Let's do. Yeah, and, and it sounds like you are when you look into a virtual crystal ball and what does an Evanescence tour look like? What does rock and roll touring look like over the next two years? Like in your mind, because you're supposed to be, do you have a, an S load of tour dates that you tried to make work and then you tried again and you finally mm -hmm. said, you know, 2021, we are going to be bringing it. Yeah. But like when you, um, look at what a tour looks like next year. It is so hard for me to answer that because it really just depends. Are we going to get a vaccine? Is stuff going to change? Yeah. What, what are the rules going to be like? Um, we have, we will, everyone will get back to live music, live events, um, larger gatherings, but it might be, it might be quite a long time before things look like they looked before. I'm not sure. Um, and I am totally ready and willing to do things in a different way to make it safe and possible whenever we can. Um, I've seen uh, some interesting ideas happening around the world. I, there was, I saw at least two different um, concerts that were like at old drive-in theaters. Yeah, people yeah, yeah. are like in their car. I would enjoy that. Like, I mean, I, I don't know how you go to the bathroom. It's such an interesting perspective that you're saying this <laughs> because you're on a stage looking out. Meanwhile, my oh. wife and I are in a car. Maybe we have our dogs with us, man. But well, I, that's what I'm saying. Mm. I'm trying to look at it from a fan perspective. I, I, as as you always should, as the person on stage, you should be thinking about the fans' experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, as a fan, I would enjoy going and seeing my favorite band while in the comfort of my it's not the same of course it's not the same but i mean it doesn't sound that bad going to a drive-in movie meets having that be an awesome concert okay yeah i'll take that that yeah. sounds good um if there's if there's a possible way to do things like that i think there's other ways to do it and it might not need to be so extreme um hopefully um things are going to turn around for for so many more uh, valuable reasons than just going to a show um we are all hoping for uh the health and of strength of the world coming back from this um but i don't know when that's going to be i hope that by next fall we have something going on to where it's like okay there's a plan in place there's ways to be careful that everybody can agree on you know all that I, I i have to think optimistically that yes we'll be able to do this fall next year maybe evanescence should be um i don't know you I may you may have just innovated a, a way to do it and a, a different merchandise stream you know uh you probably have you know the the truck drivers that drive your gear and stuff they may use truckers buddies you know what a truckers buddy is uh you mean like the dummy like the, the no no no, like no no <laughs> No, I use that. So you can use the carpool lane? No. <laughs> I, 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 I can't believe that. <laughs> no, the trucker's buddy is is at least for dudes. I don't know what the ladies use, but you can you can put it on and pee into it. Oh so that God. You don't have to stop off. And maybe no. maybe that's what you provide fans. I, I don't there's gotta be a female version of that. God, that but, sucks. Because that it sucks. would suck to be sitting in <laughs> and the last thing I want to do is if I'm in my car and, and watching you is get up go to the bathroom, man. Man, I don't want to have to think about that at all. I don't want to. I don't want to put my face on that. <laughs> no, no, I'm not suggesting maybe. Uh, well, maybe yeah. Hey, um, can I ask you a true or false question? Okay. There's only one right answer, and it's okay. True or false? Your favorite instrument in the whole wide world is a piano. That it is. Mm -hmm. Is that true or false? I feel like I have to go with that because that's what I'm the most comfortable sitting down and using. It's, it's the closest extension of my own voice. Like to just have a thought in your head and hear it happen. You know how like you can sing and it's, you don't have to think real hard. Yeah. Piano has become like that for me over the years. So yeah, I would say piano is my favorite instrument. Yes, true. To say, okay, cool. I'm glad, we, I'm glad you answered it. Um, it's weird. 
in, in such a cool way to hear you say it's an extension of my voice. Is that why? And don't laugh because I don't know these answers. I, mean, I don't know the answer to the question. That's why I'm asking you these questions. Okay. Is that why oftentimes musicians will write music on a piano? Well, I don't know. It's different for everybody. Like if you're a natural guitar player and that's your most comfortable instrument, then you would write your songs on guitar because it's whatever is um, the the easiest instrument for you to quickly um, be able to just accompany yourself and, and throw down whatever's in your mind without having to think too hard. Like I play the harp a little bit. I play the guitar a little bit. You know, I can kind of play whatever ukulele, but I'm not usually like sitting down and writing not that i haven't it's again it's cool to break out of your comfort zone and, and find a challenge because it makes you write different but if i have a thought in my head of like some kind of a melody idea or whatever and i need to quickly get it out i'm always going to go to the piano because yeah. i don't want to lose my thought when you when you do that and then you present it to the rest of your band does your drummer just listen to that and then he comes up with some sick ass beats and just riffs? Or do you ever say, uh, I'm just gonna walk into your kitchen for a second and tell you how to make this entree? Well, it's, it's definitely sometimes the first way, yes. I will say, check it out. Here's like a melody chord progression, super. I try to keep it, I try, but I have to, I have to hold myself back to yeah. keep it really simple. Um, trying to remember that that's important before showing it to the band because I can go down a rabbit hole of using electronic instruments and pro tools and kind of creating what's in my head to the best of my ability. And then sometimes that doesn't come across in a way that that's how they would hear it. And then we get a little bit stuck. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. The better way to do it is to keep it pretty simple and go, let me hear your interpretation of this. And yes, we'll, we'll sit there behind the drum and right away I have ideas. Uh, he is such a fast thinker and has great instincts musically. Uh, and I think we, part of why we particularly work really well together is he likes to play off of the vocal and I really like to play off the rhythm. So you'll notice if you listen carefully, you know, to our music that the drums and the vocals are often either playing together or accenting like particular words like certain lyrics like certain musical moments that are just direct links between the drum and vocal um which is really cool i mean we're everybody in the band you know we're all fans of each other we all respect each other yeah. and like each other's work so you know when there's a part that somebody likes that's what that's what's really cool somebody will write something that inspires some, like somebody else really likes it. So they'll do a thing that accents that particular part and so on and so on and so on. So I, I think that's, that's the sound of a real band. Like you play off of each other and, and everybody's ideas can inspire different things. And a song can start from the piano, from the drums, from the guitar, from a synthesizer. It doesn't matter. It can come from anywhere. Um, but somebody's got to have some kind of a um, vision in their head of, ooh, yeah. here's a direction that it could go. And then we can yeah. all kind of go, oh, that's interesting to hear that through your eyes. That's not what I would have done. That's what's cool. That's what's cool about like one of the songs I was talking about earlier that's like 10 years old where I had an idea, but I took it too far um, on my own or something. And yeah. it was just stuck in this totally other way where they couldn't hear it. And by now um, we finally went in and just had a, total breakthrough and it is a very different song than it was 10 years ago and I love it so much more. This conversation has been, I hope you're having as much as a fun, a fun time talking about music and you and just everything. The nerd in me and the lover of music, my radio job aside, the past two minutes, I love you just giving us a little bit of a uh, behind the scenes because I hear that I do I'm not just saying this I hear it in your music and I hear it in other bands music and that's awesome the vocal is absolutely complimented by the drums or the bass guitar yeah. or a guitar yeah. riff, you know when it's punching or whatever it is so yeah that to me is fascinating um, that's cool thank you and I am having a good time <laughs> thank you very much I've got I've got I've got three things left I'm gonna I'm gonna okay. cut loose because all right this is man this, this is you right um I always say this in, in any time I'm talking to a, a musician or, or a creative uh, human being that while we can't buy a concert ticket right now, guess what? We could buy merch. We could buy music. 
So right. I want to encourage people to always do that um, because right. there are so many different ways we can do that. And while we can't necessarily buy a damn concert ticket right now um, and 400 overpriced cold beers, <laughs> um, we can certainly do that with merch and we can certainly do that with the, the music that you do have past and present. That's right. Thank so that's you. more Let's of a, that. a statement. That's a good PSA. You should pass that on. Hi, I'm Klinger. I work for iHeartRadio and <laughs> I encourage you to purchase things from bands that you love. Um, and I also I, like the, I officially the, support this message. Thank you. Thank you. On a, yes. <laughs> Uh, and, and I also like the fact that, you, you know, bands uh, offer VIP ticket options and stuff. Um, right. It's just a cool experience if people are in a position to be able to, to afford that, right? Right, right. Um, second to last question. Um, what is your favorite thing to do in the whole wide world that has zero to do with music? favorite thing to do in the whole wide world I mean besides hang out with my son and I don't know I I, mm, I you know that's really hard music sticks out as like an obvious big number one for me like that gives me life more than other things that I create yeah. um but there's like this whole tier of other things on level two that are kind of in the same world. So that's hard to answer, but I do love to cook. Cooking is totally one of them. Um, especially when it's like chasing down the perfect, whatever my friend, my neighbor in Brooklyn, um, who we miss very much and haven't seen since we moved last year. Uh, we both would cook and, uh, he lived right across the street and, uh, just like old school Brooklyn, like good cook guy and uh he has been making sourdough bread and i went through a, a uh, phase of making my sourdough bread you know you make the starter the whole yes. thing which is such a it's a daily pet feeding i mean it's, yeah. it's something to do um but i hadn't made my own starter he's making all these beautiful breads and sharing all these pictures of them um and he totally i was like will you send me some of your starter like mine died last time. Like I want to, I want some Brooklyn starter. Like yeah. give me your, and he totally, I gave my FedEx number and he FedExed me like a little thing no starter. Way. Yeah. It's great. It's awesome. I opened, I was like, oh, he put like cinnamon rolls in there. There's no cinnamon rolls in there. That's just how awesome his starter smelled. So I've been making sourdough bread this week, um, which is awesome and fun. It's, it's still like creation. Like you're still putting your heart in something and doing like the best you can to create, but then you get to instantly enjoy it and eat it. <laughs> Wait, wait a sec. So are you suggesting the water in Brooklyn creates a badass starter for sourdough? I mean, I, actually, I'm trying to remember if that, yes, that was my thinking. Cause that's, what's in the bagels, right? Yeah. Like the fact that the bagels rise the way that, and there it's really, I have never had a bagel in the world that tastes like a New York bagel. You just can't do it. I mean, my dad makes pretty good bagels. My dad's into cooking too, but yeah, still, come on, Brooklyn bagel. But that's what they all say. Some people like take the water out of the tap and literally ship it to yeah. places so that they can make the New York bagel. So yeah, that was my thinking. Uh, our neighbor, uh, Mona and her husband, during the, about five months ago when all this started, um, she made a starter and uh, she is still enjoying the fruits of this. I mean, the starter is gonna live on as long it as- It can live it. forever if you take care of it. Its name is Sourdough Sammy. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. <laughs> She's not shared like anything. She's, Sammy's. And the, I, I do want to mention, my wife and I went to Brooklyn. Um, what, what is the, the market, the big floor after floor market? At Chelsea Market? No, Wait. it's not Chelsea. It's, it's, like a, it's like an antique hall, but food as well. Ar Artisan Fleas, you are talking about Chelsea Market. Maybe I am. It, it's, um, uh, you know, like on like 9th and 11th or 15th like okay. right on 9th or 10th avenue right near the water on the that i think is where we went and it was it has to be that you know where all the all the um iron chef restaurants oh no i excuse me smorgasbord oh okay yeah totally smorgasburg right Berg. and they have different got places it. Got it. We got live it. right down the street from they do it in a different place every every year right yeah. got so it. we had it one year a few years back down the street like walking to, we lived right by the water it was right down it was like five blocks from the water from our place so we could walk down and get like i mean just the best food in the world and just a bite of everything and yeah, just wait yeah, yeah. Lines and eat food and stand around yes i miss it so much oh god 
I would love I to mean, go back to Smorgasburg right now. I'm so hungry right now. I'm starving. I have, I'm, it's time for lunch. <laughs> it is. It's almost time for, well, early dinner, senior citizen style. If I'm eating yeah. dinner at five o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, got you. Um, I, my final thing is this. Um, thank you very much for keeping rock alive. Oh, man. Thank rock, you. Rock needs uh, a constant hug. And well, that's right. And thank you for giving that. Thank you for um, being somebody who cares about rock music because that's what's really going to keep it alive. It's just about real people. That's what it is. So thank you. Yeah, this rock. Thanks for the thanks for the rock hug. You got it. I can't <laughs> wait to uh, to catch up again. Thank you for making the music. And uh, 2020 has absolutely gotten a damn upgrade with these uh, these songs from Evanescence. Thank you very much. So you take care. Until we talk again, Amy. Thanks for your time. This has been superstar awesome. Thank you. Agreed. Cool. Have a great talk day. Talk to you later. You too. Bye. Bye. Hey, you guys are awesome. Thank you for the use of your ocular lenses and your ears. I'm Klinger from iHeartRadio.